Hello, Dr. Jensen. What a delight it is to have you with us again today. Before we get into some new and exciting information on 4Life Transfer Vector, I'd like to retell our viewers of your background. You have a PhD in immunology and are a co-founder of NIST Labs, a premier clinical research lab that specializes in studying the immune benefits of natural products. Now, it's been a moment since our last conversation on the 4Life Transfector clinical study. As a reminder, we discussed many details of that study that really shed new light into how Transfector works in our bodies. For us, the most important finding in the study was that Transfector was demonstrated to activate the immune system in as little as two hours. So can you briefly recap how the study was conducted and some of the key findings? Yes. We used a very controlled study design. It's also called a double-blind randomized placebo-controlled trial. Uh, in this kind of trial, each participant serves as his or her own control. What that means is that each participant actually consumes both uh, the transfer factor on one clinic visit and placebo on another clinic visit. And then we compare each person's physiological and immunological changes between those two days. And that difference, that change is the result that we analyze. The types of tests we do on blood samples include measurements on the immune cells in the blood and on cytokines. And let me explain that. Immune cells are always on the move in the body. They want to travel and they want to search for things that are not as they should be so the immune cells can help us keep in good health. When I use the word cytokines, that describes small communication molecules that circulate in our blood. The immune system communicates with the whole body by sending out different kinds of cytokines. For example, some cytokines signal to the brain if the immune system detects an infection somewhere and then the brain coordinates with the whole body, including things like fever and other changes that help us fight that infection. Uh, there are also cytokines that specifically signal to our built-in repair systems, our repair mechanisms in our body, such as stem cells. Wow, that's really interesting. And now that the clinical study has just been published in a prestigious scientific journal called Current Issues in Molecular Biology, Help us understand the importance of publishing significant research like this transfer vector clinical study. Yes, the publication of this type of scientific article is really important, and it allows us to share our results with the scientific community. So help us understand. Please describe for us the process of publishing research articles. You see, we can't just write an article and publish it. Uh, after we submit a manuscript to a journal, the journal editors take that manuscript through a rigorous review, review process, and that's called peer review. And that means that our manuscript is sent out to several scientists in the field and who are encouraged to criticize and ask questions about the methods and about the conclusions. And the journal editors only accept the article for publication if several independent scientists in the field agree that the science is solid. And that gives this kind of publication a really good credibility. Absolutely. And certainly there's a lot of time and effort that goes into conducting and publishing research. And this study leverages 25 years of four life science while reinforcing and building off of what is already known about transfer factor. And speaking of building off of what is already known, there was one important detail in this clinical study that we didn't discuss in our last interview. It's a key piece of data that has led to a new understanding of how transfer vector works in our body. Aside from looking at the impact of transfer vector on our immune system at two hours, you also collected the same type of data at 24 hours. In essence, you're looking at how long the effects of a single dose of transfer vector lasts in our bodies over the course of a whole day. So Dr. Jensen, tell us more about this data collected at 24 hours and what that might mean towards our overall immune health. Yes, that's really interesting. Uh, we clearly see a robust effect on the immune system at one hour and two hours. 
after consuming the four life transfer factor. And most of those effects are transient. In transient meaning, they only last a, a short time. Um, we like to see those kind of results. Uh, that means that we are giving the immune system a gentle nudge. We are not hitting it with a sledgehammer. We are supporting and helping its normal daily routines. I have an example I want to give you. I want to have you think about a water hose. It's like the immune system is flushing and washing in the bloodstream, is washing through our body, looking for bad stuff that needs to be cleaned out. And this gentle water hose is just rinsing bad stuff, bacteria and viruses out of our system. And what we are doing the transfer factor with a single dose is for a few hours, we crank up that water hose a little bit more, give it a transient, stronger flushing rinsing effect that said there are a few markers that were still affected after 24 hours and that's also important uh, one of the examples i want to describe to you is a pro-inflammatory cytokine called il6 and that was reduced already at one hour after consuming one dose of transfer factor and became even stronger at two hours but it actually remained lower than at the start of the study, even after 24 hours. And this may possibly suggest that the immune regulation initiated by transfer factor also may involve a mild regulation of inflammation. Another interesting observation involves a cytokine that's known as a chemokine. A chemokine is a signal that attracts immune cells and direct their movement in the body. There is a chemokine called MCP1 that was only mildly elevated at one hour and two hours after consuming a single dose of four life transfer factor, but that was significantly elevated at 24 hours. Well, that's really interesting. So what, what you're saying is some immune markers are very transient in that they last a short time, while other markers may be more long lasting. Yes. So with this transient effect, you reference that it means that the immune system, the benefits start to dissipate over time. And so to keep your immune system in an optimal state, you might need to take transfer factor on a daily basis. Is that right? Yes. This transient effect means that every day a person consumes the four life transfer factor, the immune system gets a fresh push, a fresh, and fresh and nudge a fresh little turn up of the water hose for a little bit. And, and just to be clear, the clinical study dose is 600 milligrams of transfer factor trifactor formula. And our customers and affiliates already know that 4Life has several products that contain this amount of transfer factor or more. So would we still expect a positive effect or an even greater effect on our immune system if we took 600 milligrams of transfer factor or more through an individual or combination of products? Yes, with that dose, we would expect the the effect we saw in our study. Um, what is interesting to add on to that, though, is the um, opportunity of possibly enhancing the effect in certain types of combination products. Um, we don't have clinical answers on that quite yet, but we have studied those kind of combination products in lab tests and seen dose-dependent effects. We've also seen some strong synergistic effects with other immune-activating natural products. So this may be a topic for our next video. Well, Dr. Jensen, you have given us such great information that validates the importance of taking transfer factor every day. And so on behalf of 4Life and all of our affiliates and customers from around the world, thank you for your time and thank you for your insights. Thank you.